skeptical about it in addition to that. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm here to tell you that it's a really good usable um, tool that we have. It's built into every Yeah, it's every one of those SKU. things that you just forget that it's there. And yeah. if, if you just give it a shot again, uh, it's the kind of thing that's kind of handy. It, it's super handy and, and you don't have to use it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I turn it on, if I know I have to dictate a long mail, or, if I, or I, I'm sorry, if I have to write a long mail, I'll just plug it in and dictate it, and then I'll go back and edit. Yeah. You know, because it's a lot easier for me. I'm, I'm still of the hunt and peck variety of uh, typist, despite the fact that I've been working in this business for way too long. And so for me, it's just an easy way to get text into, in, into the system. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close WordPad real quick, just so we can demonstrate this. I'm going to come down. Um, to the start menu. There's a couple of different ways to get here. Um, you can go to the control panel to save time in the search box. I'm a huge proponent of the search box in yeah, the start menu. Yeah. So I'm just going to type in speech and immediately at the top it says programs Windows speech recognition and I hit enter. Mm -hmm. That's another great thing from an accessibility point of view that they did in Windows 7 which is the the search box in the start menu. Yeah. For people that have disabilities, that have a hard time, that have different tools that they you know, are using on the PC. Um, this is a really um, convenient way for them to um, access the applications and programs without having to know where they're at. Yeah. Cognitive disabilities, in fact, uh, are, are probably the most biggest beneficiary of that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to ask me to set up my microphone rather quickly. Peter dictates to his computer. He prefers it to typing and perf particularly prefers it to pen and paper. And what exactly is that doing there? Is it uh, trying to determine the, uh, are, are you doing like a training? It's actually the just text? calibrating the, um, the volume on the, on the microphone so that it's, uh, if the volume is too high, it gets distorted. If it's too low, it's not going to understand what it's saying. So believe it or not, it's actually taking sort of a voice sample. Yeah. And you'll notice when I started, the green bar was going almost to the top, up into the red area. And then as I continued to speak, it gradually came down as it was adjusting the, the volume, essentially. Now, I remember back in the day on my tablet PC that I used to have to go in and, uh, and do a lot of training to get accuracy. Um, do you still have to do that? You know, I always uh, recommend um, using, uh, I always recommend using the training. Mm -hmm. We're obviously going to do this right out of the box. I mean, you yeah. see me, we're going through setup right now on this. Um, and uh, I always recommend to folks to, um, to, to do the training because it will improve the performance. Yeah. But out of the box, you'll see, I mean, this has... You don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah. Uh, it's like tablet PC and the handwriting recognition. Mm -hmm. It does a fair job right out of the box, but if you go in and you write the sentences, the 50 or 60 sentences that it asks you to write, it just improves the performance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and uh, we're not going to take the tutorial and speech recognition is now um, started. Now at the top of the screen, there's sort of a uh, status window yeah. that's up there. Now I can choose to turn that on or off. I like to leave it on so I know what's happening. Um, I don't know if you can hear it here, but in my headset I can hear it's giving me chimes when it understands and recognizes commands. There's three states that speech recognition is in, off, sleeping, and then listening. In the sleeping mode, it's actually listening for me to give it a command to wake up. Yeah. So at this point, I can actually hands off, you know, tie my hands behind my back, and I can use my computer. So if I just say, start listening, start listening. So now it's listening. I can control my PC. Now, what I'm going to do, I have a mute button on my microphone yeah. that I'm going to use so that it's not continually listening to me as I'm talking to you. So at this point, I can do more than just dictation. I can actually control all the aspects of my computer. So I can say, start menu, and it opens my start menu. Open WordPad, and it opens WordPad for me. So now I can take something and I can dictate. I can say, uh, the quick brown fox, comma, jumps over the lazy dog, period. Very nice. So I, I have the sentence that it dictates. And that's the typical thing that most people think, oh, uh, speech recognition is really only for dictation. There are a couple of things, actually, that I think are even cooler than this. I mean, this, yeah. this is impressive, but there are a few things that I think are cooler than this. 
One of them is something called mouse grin. How, if I wanted to resize this window, would you resize it using your voice? That's the typical question I get. So in this case, I'm going to say mouse grid. And it breaks my window into nine quadrants. I'm going to call out numbers until I get down to a point, and I'm going to mark my end point. So you're going to hone down on an area using these numbers. Exactly. The I'm going to go to the corner of this window. Nine, five, four, eight, mark. So I've marked my end point, and now I want to say, where do, you, where do I want this task to finish? Five, five, five. Click. Very cool. And it's going to move my window in. So just a sampling of a few of the things that you can do with speech recognition. So if someone wants to start using speech recognition, but they don't know what terms they can use, what's the best way to pick up what you can say and what you can do? Obviously, the tutorial is going to be the, the ideal thing. I always say the tutorial is designed to teach you how to use it, not, how, not for it to learn how to listen to you. Yeah. Um, if you're into speech recognition as we are, again, this was a right out of the box. You saw us go through the setup uh, as we went into this. Uh, fantastic tool for, for people. Again, built in. It's available in every SKU. So everything from uh, starter edition to, um, to premium and ultimate. And so do you suggest using a headset like that? I know one of the things that I like is having a headset when I do uh, speech recognition that has a mute on it. Yep. It, it can make it easier so that you're not uh, accidentally doing things. My recommendations in using speech recognition are exactly that. Use a wired headset with a mute button, preferably one that has noise cancellation or, or sometimes referred to as digital signal processing or DSP. Yeah. Um, I have a portable one because I travel a lot. Mm -hmm. So for me, I want something that folds up in my bag really easily. But you can get bigger ones. I know some people like the ones that they can actually use to listen to music and cover your ears. And yeah. So it's all about preference. But I say get a digital USB microphone, not one of the analog microphones with uh, the standard mini plugs. Yeah. Um, digital signal processing and a mute button is definitely beneficial. And can you use the uh, microphone array on Connect? Um, currently, uh, if people are out there using the SDK, there are a number of ways that you can use Connect and the microphone array for um, in a, you know, commanding and controlling windows. Yeah. Um, I haven't specifically seen it working with speech recognition turned on. I, I, I have to believe that it's possible just yeah. based on the integration that I know array. about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I would believe that that would be true, but I haven't seen it work cool. uh, personally. Good. So good. Well, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the uh, the ease of access center a minute ago. And one of the things that um, I like to uh, point out is most of us have family members who, uh, as I was talking a little bit about the language of accessibility earlier, that just don't, don't relate yeah. to the language. And so the Ease of Access Center, the quick key for this is the uh, Windows key U. And that's going to bring up the Ease of Access Center. So I don't have to go to Control Panel. So you can remember that with it. usability. It, Windows key U, it actually used to be the utility manager in Windows XP, uh, and it was sort of commandeered for the, uh, the accessibility stuff, and usability is a great yeah. way to remember that. So there's a, 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 right underneath this main box, there's something here that says, not sure where to start, get recommendations on how to make your computer to use. And I, I get this question a lot. Well, I want to help my mom or I want to help my grandmother understand how to make their computer easier to use but they just, I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Here's where to start. You start here, get recommendations on how to make your computer to easier to use. And this is literally a questionnaire that it's going to go through and ask you a series of questions. The first one is about eyesight. And just select the statements that appear to you. Now, these are real language sort of questions. Images and text on the TV are difficult to see even when I'm wearing glasses. Now. I can talk about vision impairments or being blind. My dad, again, is just not going to click those buttons. He's like, I don't, I don't have a vision problem, but I have a hard time seeing the TV. Yeah. Right? So that's to him, it was like, oh, okay, wait, uh, yeah, that, I can relate to that. And mm -hmm. it doesn't label him in any way. So I can go through this entire questionnaire. Pens and pencils may be difficult for me to use. Uh, conversations might be uh, here. Well, actually, we have a lot of background noise, so we'll do that in an environmental thing. And then uh, let's say I don't have any impairments there. 
um, and we'll leave those unchecked. When I click Done, it brings up this recommended settings list. And what this actually is, is it's taken settings from all over the system, provided a set of recommendations, and puts them all in one list. So I don't have to go. It doesn't say, OK, so go to the mouse control panel and do this, and go to this yeah, control panel Yeah, Grandma doesn't do have that. to go to 15 Grandma different places. Grandma doesn't have places. to go to 15 places. Yeah. So it's all in one place. I can then just click down. I can, it, says, it recommends to make the focus rectangle thicker. It says to turn on the toggle keys. Um, there's uh, the opportunity for me to change my pointer size if I want. Um, and so it just gives me a series of all of these um, options by default. And I can change them and customize them as I want. But I don't have to go find them. Yeah. And that's really the key thing here. And a lot of people just don't know that this exists. Very nice. Um, the last thing that I want to show, um, I actually think th that I use quite a bit, particularly if you use a dual monitor setup or even more, I lose my mouse. Yeah. all the time. I don't know if you have this problem, but I lose my mouse. I, I, I have done that, yes. Yeah. So in this setting, we're in the Ease of Access Center, and I make the mouse easier to use. Um, you'll see this looks fairly familiar. This was taken and turned on to the other, um, was in the other uh, recommendations mm -hmm. that the, the wizard gave us. I'm going to come down here to the mouse settings. This is actually how I'm going to get to the, the mouse settings for this particular mouse. And of course, on the pointer options tab, there are a couple of different options for visibility. One of them is called pointer trails. And what this does is actually then creates sort of a tail behind my mouse, which just makes it easier for me to follow it on the screen. Yeah. I find that one a little disorienting, but some people actually really find it useful. Yeah. The one that I like is show location of the pointer when I press the control key. And a lot of, this has been there for a long time, but a lot of people forget that it's there. When I click Apply to this, and I come up to the screen, and I press the Control key, it sort of gives me this radar, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It helps me find my mouse. And again, using a small mouse on a dual screen monitor, I lose my mouse all the time. With a couple clicks of the Control key, I can see where the little radar yeah. uh, symbols Yeah. That's interesting. In. I didn't even know that was there. I mean, I've used the mouse uh, pointer trails before. Yeah. But from the, uh, you know, the 15 foot interface where I'm trying to use the computer that I've got hooked up in my living room, um, that'd be awesome. I mean, I could just yeah. hit the Control key and I can see where it's at. Yeah, and it's simple. I mean, it's a single key press. It's just a, it's unobtrusive. The pointer trails to me can be obtrusive because it's always it's on. It's a little trippy. It is. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, I've had a little <laughs> yeah. too much to drink today. Yeah. Um, so I like this one because it's a little less obtrusive, yeah. but still useful. Very cool. Yeah. And then the last one related to the mouse, this is another one that a lot of people just don't know exists. And I know we talked about the developers love their keyboard shortcuts and all of that. But for people that really do use the mouse, and I'm a mouse-driven sort of person, there's actually this command that's activate a window by hovering over it with the mouse. And again, a lot of people don't know that this exists. I'm going to click Apply to this. And I'm going to shrink this window up. And I'm going to open another window here. Um, and maybe we'll put an Internet Explorer window in the back of that. Um, and we're going to put these windows up like this. And let's minimize this. So what this allows me to do is I can actually as I just hover over a window, it's actually just taking, so instead of having to click to take control of the yeah. window, I can just hover over it. I don't have to go to the top of the bar to click to activate that window. I can actually just, once I move my mouse over a window, it automatically activates the window and I can start clicking on it to, to do what I need to do. Very cool. So Well, thanks for showing us this today, Daniel. My pleasure. Thanks Very for having cool. me over. Can't wait to start trying some of these. And uh, we're going to talk again soon. You're going to invite us over. We'll take a look at the usability lab over there, too. Yeah, we've got an accessibility lab over in 27 where we uh, talk a little bit more about some third-party solutions as well that you can uh, add to your experience for accessibility to augment what we have in Windows. Thanks for showing us this today. Thanks. Mm -hmm.